Understanding NAD biology can be very complex and even in this very simplified diagram you can see that there is a lot going on. There are multiple precursors that NAD can be made from, there are multiple pathways that can make NAD and there, ju there are just as many pathways that can also degrade and break down NAD. It can also be recycled and it can flip between oxidized and reduced states. So if you really want to understand how to efficiently boost NAD, then you really need to understand all the biology behind it. So first of all, what are NAD precursors? Well, basically an NAD precursor is the raw material that the body uses to make NAD. It's like the building blocks for NAD. And there are five different precursors that the body can use. It can use tryptophan, nicotinic acid, nicotinamide, nicotinamide riboside, or nicotinamide mononucleotide. And apart from tryptophan, which is an amino acid, the rest of the NAD precursors are actually vitamin B3 derivatives. So a key question is, how do these precursors compare and how do they make NAD? So first of all, let's cover tryptophan because tryptophan is somewhat of an outlier because unlike the rest of the precursors, it's an amino acid and it's made into NAD by a pathway called the de novo pathway, which occurs mostly in the liver and the kidneys. But this pathway is known to make only a very small contribution to overall NAD production, so it's not really spoken about as much as the other pathways. So what about all the other precursors, the vitamin B3 derivatives? Well, this is where it becomes slightly more complicated, and it's because there's often confusion about the difference between the precursors because of the way that they are named. So vitamin B3 and niacin are used interchangeably as an umbrella term to refer to a multiple vitamin B3 derivatives. For example, you'll often see both nicotinic acid and nicotinamide labeled as niacin, even though they are structurally different and they have very different effects in the body. For example, nicotinic acid is known to help reduce cholesterol, whereas nicotinamide does not have this effect. Nicotinic acid is also known to activate receptors that cause a really intense and somewhat unpleasant flushing sensation in the skin, whereas again, nicotinamide does not have this effect. So it's rather confusing that they are both grouped together under the name of niacin. And just to confuse things a little further, nicotinamide is also sometimes referred to as niacinamide, but they are the same thing. Now, the general reason for this is that although these compounds are structurally different and have different effects in the body, they ultimately end up down the same biological pathways. So the term niacin equivalent, sometimes abbreviated as NE, is used as an umbrella term to describe the contribution to dietary intake of all the forms of niacin that are available to the body. But when it comes to NAD, the vitamin B3 derivatives that have been investigated most extensively are nicotinamide, nicotinamide riboside, and nicotinamide mononucleotide. And no matter what the precursor, they all end up in one of two different NAD production pathways at various points. And these are the priest handler pathway or the salvage pathway. And out of all the NAD biosynthesis pathways, the salvage pathway at the top here is actually considered to be the primary source of cellular NAD production. This is because as well as being able to use multiple precursors as the raw material, such as nicotinamide, NR or NMN, it also plays a big role in recycling NAD that has been broken down in the cell. So which is the best precursor to use to boost NAD? And a question that I get asked all the time is why do we use nicotinamide as part of our NAD boosting supplement, the Cheeto Time Plus, rather than the more popular precursors such as NR or NMN? Well, this is an intense area of debate and there are a number of reasons for this. So first of all, we know that once nicotinamide, NR and NMN get inside of the cells, they all do lead to varying degrees of NAD production. 
But the big hurdle that many people don't consider is actually getting the precursor into the cell in the first place, because this is where the NAD production pathways live. So they can take the precursor and actually make it into NAD. And cells don't just let anything pass in and out. In fact, the passage of molecules across the cell membrane is highly controlled. And what we know is that both NR and NMN require special transport channels to cross into the cell membrane and into the cells. And not all cell types actually have these channels. Whereas nicotinamide has been shown to be freely diffusible across the cell membrane and less reliant on active transport. This means it can be absorbed by many more cells, which is favorable because NAD is required by all cells. So we want to boost it in as many cells as possible. Another reason is that although NR and NMN do increase NAD, studies have shown that when taken orally, NR seems to get entirely metabolized to nicotinamide in the liver before it's then released into systemic circulation where it enters the cells and is then converted to NAD, suggesting that when you're using NR, you are really just using nicotinamide to make NAD. Also with NMN, some studies have suggested that the majority of NMN is metabolized into NR before it's then taken up by the cells. And finally, we know that nicotinamide is the preferred precursor for the body. It is the physiological circulating NAD precursor that the majority of our NAD is naturally made from. NAD is not made solely from NR or NMN in normal physiological circumstances. And just to note, some people say that a drawback of nicotinamide is that high doses may inhibit the sirtuins, which are NAD-dependent proteins that promote the cellular health and coordinate many of the beneficial effects of NAD. And this makes the use of nicotinamide seem counterintuitive. But the studies that are often quoted to support this theory have all been conducted in vitro, meaning they're done in cells in culture using exceptionally high concentrations of nicotinamide that would never be reached under normal physiological circumstances in the body. This is because in our bodies, the salvage pathway efficiently converts any leftover nicotinamide into fresh NAD, meaning that any nicotinamide is unlikely to hang around long enough inside healthy cells as it's rapidly converted to NAD to maintain tissue homeostasis.